Okay, I'm going to work out this old exam. Um, for example, let's see the first question. It's about factorial. So how do how do we calculate factorial? There's one way to rewrite the term factorial as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. So in this case, we see 7 factorial, 7 factorial in the numerator, 7 factorial in the denominator. So they cancel each other out. So we're left with 10 times 9 times 8. And 8 times 9 is 72. 72 times 10 is 720. Okay, pretty simple, the first one. Let's see now. The second one is about sequence. Right now, A1 means N equals 1. So 8 times 1 and 1 plus 4. That give us 8 times 1 is just 8. 1 plus 4 is 5. So the first one, we get A over 5. Second one is N equals to 2. Right. 2 times 8, that's 16. Then 2 plus 4, that's 6. 16 over 6, I have a common factor of 2. 16 divided by 2, that's 8. Mm -hmm. 6 divided by 2, that's 3. So we get an A over 3. A3 means N equals to 3. So we multiply by 3. 3 times 8, 24. 3 plus 4, that's a 7. It cannot be simplified. Right? Now A4. That means N equals to 4. 4 times 8, 32. Uh, 4 plus 4, so this is 4 now. 4 plus 4, that's 8. 32 divided by 8, that's 4. 5. 85 means n equals to 5 now. 5 times 8, 40. Then 5 plus 4, that's 9. 40 divided by 9, no common factor, cannot be simplified. So those are the first five terms of such such sequence. Now let's see five. Five also we want to find it in its term. First we see we have an alternating series. Okay. The series is alternating. So that means we don't know what's in the denominator yet, but let's Actually, let's figure out the denominator first. We need to read to the numerator. But the numerator, for sure, we have negative 1 raised by n to the power. Because right? the first term is negative when n equals 2. So I want to start with, let's, let's define n first. So n is greater than or equal to 1. So that means n start with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Sometimes we could let n start with zero. So numerator have negative one raised by n. No, the denominator is obvious. So let's figure out the denominator. The first one, first term will have four in the denominator. Second one, 16, 64. You see that's a four raised by n is power. Right? The first term is four raised by one. 16 is four raised by two. 64, 4 raised by 3, 256, 4 raised by 4, 1024, 4 raised by 5. So the denominator is 4 raised by n's power. The numerator will have negative 1 raised by n's power. Now, what about the numerator? 5 is a 6 minus 1, right? 7 is 8 minus 1. 9 is 10 minus 1. So I think I see the pattern. It's 2, let me use parentheses. It's 2n plus 1 plus 3. Yeah, because I need to match up the first term to be 5. If I do 2n plus 1, 
two times one, I only get three, but I need to get up to five. So two times one is two, two plus three is five. Second term, the numerator is seven. So two times two is four, four plus three is seven. The third numerator is nine. I have two times three, six plus three, that's nine. Then fourth term, two times four, eight, eight plus three is 11. Okay, so this is a general term, A n, for such sequence given. And n start with one, right? Because you see, assume first term is A one. Sometimes we could have the first term as A naught or A zero. Let's see four. Well, four to three, let's subtract five. Three to negative one, negative two, subtract five. Negative two to negative seven, subtracting five. Negative seven to negative 12, subtracting five. So each step is being subtracted by five. So which means we have A minus how many fives? So A minus, the first term is A n, is A one. So we want to n start with one, so we better do n minus one. Right, so a minus five times n minus one, or it can be 13 minus five n. You see when n equals one, the 13 minus five, that's eight. When n equals two, negative five times two, get a negative 10, 13 minus 10, that's three. When n equals three, three times negative five, negative 15, 13 minus 15, that's negative two. So the nth term is 13 minus five n. That's 10. 10, we want to write a single sum, single sigma for this summation. And uh, let the index starting from one. Let's observe this. So this, the first term case, the index start with the three. Okay, this variable is just a variable. So K, I, J doesn't make any difference. So our focus is those numbers. So the lower index is three. The upper one is eight, right? That means K starting from three ends up at eight. Well, let's check the second one. The second one starts from nine ends up 13, right? So this is, it's like a continuation of A to nine. Then we observe, this is a five K cube minus 15. This five is up front. Well, we can pull this five inside. If we pull five inside, we distribute five, we get exactly the same as the first one. Yeah, oops. Right, we get a five K cube minus 15. So those first two terms, we can combine them right away. Let me copy paste. Let me copy, let me keep the original one. Let me copy paste right on the second one. Okay. So these two, I can combine them. So I can change the first two to be going from three up to 13. Because this second one, second term, just the continuation of the first term. Right? I still have five K cubed minus 15 or five can be outside minus 15, right? Now, compare, comparing the second one, the second one is K goes from two up to 12, and it's just constant seven, doesn't depend on K. So that's easy. Now let's change our index. Let's change it. So this is index from three. I want to change the I going from one. That means K equals to I plus two. So I, I need to change this K. The i plus two raised by three. And what about 13? Before it goes from three to 13, now it goes from one to 11, right? Three minus two is one, 13 minus two is 11. So I'm going to do the same thing for this, for the second term. 
K starting from two, I'm going to change the I starting from one. So that means subtracting one. Also 12 needs to subtract one. I don't have to change the inside because it doesn't depend on K, it's a constant. Now I see the two sigma lower index, index starting from one, ends at 11. So it's consistent. I can still get rid of this summation sign. Okay, so I have this, oops. Now I see I have this negative 15 and the plus seven, these two can be combined. That's it becomes a negative eight. So that's it. So that's the answer. So in the end, I combine to be this one term. I don't need this. And I plus two, yeah. It's a single sigma sign for those three sigma signs. I change the i starting from one ends at 11. The inside have five times i plus two raised by three minus eight. Now let's see c. C, we have a sequence here. Five, 10, 17, 26. So what's the next number after 26? Five to 10, add to the five. Right. 10 to 17, add to the 7. 17 to 26, add to the 13. So maybe let's write here. So from 5 to 10, add to the 5. From 10 to 17, add to the 7. From 17 to 26, I did a dead team. So the question is this, find the missing term. So what is the next one? What's, let's observe five, seven, 13. Is it 13? Not 13. Because 17 to 26, that add up a nine, not, not, not 13, sorry. Right, 17 at nine is 26. Mm. So it's just adding odd numbers. So the next one has to be adding 11, right? Because 5 to 7 added 2, 7 to 9 added 2, 9 to 11 added 2. So that means this number has to be 26 plus 11, which is 37. And is it geometric, arithmetic, or neither? It's neither, right? If it's arithmetic, every time it would add the same number for the common difference. If it's a geometric, every time it would multiply by a same number. So this one, neither adding a same number nor multiplying by a same number. So this is a neither. Let's see B, we have five, seven, nine, eleven. Basically, this is adding two, adding two, adding two. So this is arithmetic sequence because the common difference is a two. Okay. Well, what's the next one? Does 11 add two it would be 13. Let's see this sequence. Well, four, 16, 28, 40, right? Four times four, 16. Four times seven, 28. Four times 10, so if we write here. So from four to 16, we multiply by four. From 16 to 28, it's not obvious, right? Because that's a seven over four, is it? No, four over seven, right? So multiply the by four, not four over seven, seven over four, seven over four, let me check. Oh no, because we need to get 28. Oh, you know what? Let's do adding. Four to 16, how much we added? We added 12. 16 to 28, how much we added? We added 12. 28 to 40, how much? 12. So this is a arithmetic sequence because we have a common difference of 12. Let's see D, 
5, 20, 80, 320. 5 times 4, 20. 20 times 4, 80. 80 times 4, 320. So this is a geometric with a common ratio of 4. 7. Write out summation for the sum above. Some. Oh, okay. So this this one, just just for the sum, not above. Okay, just for the sum. Well, this is from one to five, right? When i equals one, we have a negative two. Raised by. No, I need, I need to cut. I need to cut and paste, so I can write the. Exponents. So the first term is negative two raised by i starting from one, so one minus one is zero. The first term. Second term is negative one, negative two raised by two minus one, which is one. Third term is negative two raised by three minus one, which is two. Negative two raised by four minus one, which is a three. Last one. Negative two raised by five minus one, which is raised by four. Right? Five terms. So read out the summation for the sum. This is five. Let's say eight. We want to use a sigma notation, starting from one to write this. So let's copy and paste. Let me copy one. I want to use this part. So my summation, my i start from one, I need to figure out my upper limit. And the inside, I need to figure out the inside. I don't know that yet. So let me just erase all this. Okay, let's figure out. So from 4 to 11, I added a 7. From 11 to 17, I added a 7. So this is 7n minus 3, right? Because the common difference is a 7. That means each time you increase by 7. So we have 7n here. But the first term is 4. So seven times one is seven. I need to minus three to get four. Then when n equals two, two times seven, that's 14. 14 minus three, I get 11. When n equals three, three times seven, 21. 21 minus three, I get 18. So this is n's term, right? Now I need to figure out my up index, my up index. So how many terms I have? I have four, 11, up to 102. Well, let's write down 102 here. Let's figure out the so 102 equals to 7 times n minus 3. Maybe I should do it on the second one. Let me figure out n. Because once I have the n's term, I have the n's term, so this is the n's term. Now I need to figure out which term is 102, the last term. That helps me to figure out the upper index. So then that means 7n equals to 102 plus 3, that's 105. Divided by 7, so n equals to 15. Right? 7 times 15, that's 105. So n equals to 15. So my i goes from 1 up to 15. And that's it. So this is the answer for number eight. For number nine, binomial. We want to expand the ex expression using binomial theorem. So let me see if I can have uh, the calculation of binomial combination sign. If I do have that, I can use that. I can copy and paste. No, I don't. Okay, so remember the combination. So the first one is a 
the coefficient, or you can use something called the Pascal's triangle to figure out the coefficient of so binomial theorem. Let me talk about binomial theorem a little bit. First, you could think Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle. Triangle. Right? Pascal's triangle is saying you keep doing once. The first one, the first level, you just have one. Then the second level, you put it one, one on each side. So what is this? This is going to be the coefficient of each term in the binomial expansion. Then the third level, on the side, you have one. But then the middle one, the top two, one plus one gives you two. So your middle one is two now. You still have this one, what, what does this represent? Let me write here. This representing a plus b raised by zero power. Maybe I can copy paste. Oops. So I just need this notation. Okay. Able to write a plus b binomial raised by zero. And the second one. <laughs> That's a plus b raised by one. Then you just have a plus b. So this one is just equals to one. Anything raised by zero power. And this one equals a plus b. And this third level is a plus b squared. Squared. That equals the a squared plus two a b plus b squared. You see the coefficients? So this this one is coefficient of A. This one is coefficient of B. This one is co coefficient means the number before the variable. This one is the number before A squared. This two is the number before AB. This one is the number before B squared. So you keep building this. You keep building this. Let me make this closer so I can have space to write. So this is called a Pascal's triangle. Okay. Then the next level is Let's build up to five. So one, now the upper two, one plus two, that's a three. Then two plus one, that's three. Then we have one on the side. And this represents a plus b raised by three. And we would have three, no, one a cubed plus three a square b. plus three a b squared and plus b cubed. Okay, let's see what this is. This one is a coefficient or number before a cube. This three is a number before the second term. This three is number before the third term. And this one is a coefficient of last term. So how do we get a square b or a b square? How do we know? We see the first term will have a cube, second term will have a square, third term will have a, and last term we don't have a anymore, which means a to the zero power. a to the zero power is one. So that means the first one exponents descends, right? So first it goes with the highest, a three, a raised by three then a raised by two, then a raised by one, and no more. So the first one, exponent of the first one, descends. Exponent of the second one, ascends, right? Ascends. So you see no b in the first term, which means b to the zero power, then b to the first power, then b to the second power, then b cubed. So that's the pattern. 
once we have this pattern, it's very we remember the coefficient, or we don't have to remember, we just build the Pascal triangle for the coefficient. Then it should be oops, oops, oops. It shouldn't be difficult to do the question. Let's build it up to five level. So this is raised by three. Now we do raised by four. I don't have enough space. Okay. Anyway, let's see. Can we see it? Oh yes, I can do it for fourth level. So we still write one on both sides. We just keep writing one. One plus three, I get four. Three plus three, I get six. Three plus one, I get four. Then I put one in the end. So this represents, let me copy and paste. So a plus b to the fourth power. Okay. That means a to the fourth power. Then four a cube. Four a cube, right? And b, four a cube b. Then four a squared b squared. Then, oh no, six. Six. Six a squared b squared. Then plus four a b cube. The last one, plus one times b to the fourth power. You see the same pattern, right? You see the first one goes to the highest power, then descends three, two, one, then no more. And the second one ascends the power, no b, b to the first power, b squared, b cubed, b to the fourth power, right? So if you remember this pattern and you know how to build Pascal's triangle, and you know, so the last one, I need one more line to do the last one. Let's squeeze some from here. I still start with one. Then I'm adding the upper two numbers, I get five. Adding up two, I get 10. Adding up two, I get 10. Adding up two, I get five. Then I put the one in the end. Copy and paste. So now I have a plus b to the fifth power. That's what we want. So we have a to the fifth power plus what's the coefficient? The coefficient is five times a to the fourth power, then b, then plus 10 a to the third power b squared, then plus 10, another 10, a squared, b cubed, b cubed. So one descends, the first one descends the exponent, so the second one ascends the exponent. Plus five, a, b to the fourth power. Then lastly, B to the fifth power. Okay. So compare compare the coefficient. One is for a to the fifth power, five a to the fourth power b, ten to the a cube b square, ten a square b cube, then five a b to the fourth power, then b to the fifth power. So let's now with that, let's do this. So we know our first one, what's our a, what's our b? So a is a 3x, right? B is 2y. So we have 3x parentheses raised by 5. Oh, let me copy paste. So I have 3x raised by 5. You know what? I should copy paste the above one. I should copy paste this. Just change AB. Just change AB. Okay. 
So I have my a as 3x. So everywhere, I'm just changing a to be 3x. B to be 2y. A is a 3x. B is 2y. Keep changing. A is a 3x. B is a 2y. 3x. And B is a 2y. So be very careful you give a parenthesis, right? Because of the power of the exponents will change if you, you know, depending on if you put a parenthesis, if you're not. Because A here is a 3x, B here is a 2y. Now let's do a little bit of calculation. 3 raised by 5. What's 3 raised by 5? 243. Because 3 raised by 4, 3 raised by square is 9. 3 raised by 4, that's 9 times 9, 81. 81 times 3, that's 243. So I have 200, oops. I want to write it here. I have 243 x raised by 5. Oh, I should copy this. Because otherwise it's difficult to write down the powers. I have 243 x raised by 5. Now my second term. Second term is what I have. I have two times five is 10. I have three raised by four, which is 81. 81 times 10 is 810. 810 x raised by four and the y. Okay, and the y, right? That's my second term. My third term, I have two square, which is four. Four times 10, which is 40. Then I have three cube. Three cube is 27. Well, 27 times four is a little bit difficult to calculate. So I have uh, right, two square is a four. Three cube is 27. Um, four times 27, well, eight, right? Then times 10, that's 1,080. So 1,080, what about x? x raised by 3, and y raised by square. Right. Then my next term. Next term, I have 3 raised by square, which is 9. I have 2 raised by 3, which is 8. Right, 8 times 9 times 10. Oh, that one is easier. So that's a 720 x square and the y cube. Then plus my next term, I have three, five times three times two, that's 30. x, y raised by the fourth power. And lastly, I have two y raised by five. Two raised by five is 32. And y raised by five. Okay, that's it. That's our final answer expansion of this 3x plus 2y raised by 5 All right okay let's keep going number 10 is finding the number fifth term in the expansion right so let's observe this one so this is raised by 5 right so you right this is by 5 how many terms I have A 1 2 Three, four, five, six. I have six terms. So this one is my first term. This one is my first term. This is my second term, my third one, my fourth one, my fifth one, my sixth one. So when they raise by A, that means how many terms we should have? We should have nine terms. We should have nine terms. Now also let's observe the um the expo exponents, right? So the first exponent of the first one, the first x with x is a five. 
then reduce to four, reduce to three. So that means you see this x here, right? I have first term should be x raised by a. Second term, let me write here. So that means I should have, the first term I have x raised by eight. Second term, seven. Third term, six. Fourth term, five. Fifth term, I should have x raised by four, right? Especially, I should have four x raised by four. And the b is five and five raised by uh, four. Because the exponents of a and b adds up to a. You see here, exponents adds up to be five. So this is a five, four plus one, five, three plus two, five, two plus three, five, four plus one, five, and five. So that means my fifth term, so let me write the fifth term, is this. It's the first term raised by four, and the second term raised by four because a minus four is four for the second term. All right, the rest is just calculating. This one equals to, well, four raised by four, four times four, 16. 16 times 16, 256. So we have 256 times x raised by four. Now we have the mother, let me copy and paste it so I can have a better version of the exponents. So this one, two, three, six, then multiply by five raised by four. Five squared is 25. 25 times 25, that's 525. 525. So, then 625, 625, not 525. So 25 times 25, 625. 625 times 256, oh, huge number, huge number. So once 160,000 with uh, 160,000 with three zeros. All right, so no more of this. So let's write this up front. One, six, zero, 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 zero. X raised by four. Okay, that's the number fifth term in this expansion. So A says a coefficient or coefficient just 160,000. Right? The variable part is x raised by four. Okay, now let's see five. Five, we have a sum, negative one, negative six, negative 12, so on and so forth. So we want to calculate this. All right. So let's see the difference. So three, negative three to negative six, let's multiply by two. Negative six times negative six times two, that's negative 12. So it's a ratio, geometric. Right? So this is a geometric sequence. And geometric sequence has a formula. Remember the first term, that equals to the first term in this case is negative three divided by one minus the ratio. One minus, hold on a sec. Okay, so I have a negative three, negative six, Right, it's the the ratio is two. 
right? The ratio, so geometric sequence, hold on, ratio is two. Sorry, you know what, hold on a second, let me, let's start again with this something.